This is very important because it is a medical emergency. It's very high yield and it's very important to understand. So it is also called acute congestive glaucoma, right? Or acute primary angle closure glaucoma. First of all, it's acute, right? So it occurs out of nowhere, it occurs suddenly, and, it, and if you resolve it, it goes away very quickly. It is not to be taken lightly because although it is similar to intermittent PACG, like the one which you studied before, this one is much more serious, right? It is in fact a medical emergency. And if you do not treat it quickly, it can cause total blindness. It can totally ruin your eyes, okay? So acute congestive glaucoma, not to be taken lightly. And that's and the reason it can cause total blindness is because it does not return back to the normal, just like we saw in the previous example. The angle is a bit more tighter in this case. So even if uh, there, there, there is a physiological uh, meiosis, it'll not go back to, this, to its normal status. That's why it's a medical emergency. So increased intraocular pressure, of course, it can cause infarction or necrosis of the iris. Very important, necrosis, necrosis. Remember, in glaucoma, whenever we talk about glaucoma, we talk about apoptosis of the retina, right? So glaucoma does not cause inflammation most of the time. But this one right here, this could cause infarction or necrosis, which will, of course, lead to acute inflammation. But let's talk about it later. In fact, oh, not later, but in fact, it's right here. Infarction of the iris can lead to acute inflammation. And that is a whole plethora of things, acute inflammation, right? It brings in pus and, and neutrophils and a lot of other things. And that is a big problem, as you know. And, and as, as I said, if it is not treated quickly, it can cause total blindness. Let's move forward. Let's see what you're talking about. So symptoms of acute congestive glaucoma. As I said before, uh, acute glaucoma is in which there is an angle closure. Remember, there's a this is a PACG type, right? There's an angle closure. It's painful. Angle closure glaucomas are almost always painful. Okay? And here's the thing about it rapid vision loss firstly it's not permanent it's temporary because there is edema formation remember edema formation is one of the characteristic property of acute inflammation so you have vision loss due to edema and then if it is a, if it is not treated as i said it's an emergency later what can happen is there can be permanent nerve damage which could lead, lead to total loss of vision and which is irreparable which cannot be cured so very very careful with this and of course other symptoms like redness of the eye nausea and vomiting ah okay fine signs okay wait i think this is in the next slide yeah here signs symptoms are the things which of course the patient will present right the patient will come to you with these complaints painful rapid loss of vision redness in the eye maybe nausea and vomiting but the things that you will observe as a doctor they're called signs right so what you will observe of course, the patient can't possibly know that they have an increased IOP. You will measure that, right? So the things which you will observe will be increased intraocular pressure, decreased visual acuity. Of course, there are tests for these. And you will see ischemic inflammation of the anterior segment. And the anterior segment, of course, includes the cornea and, and, and uh, the underside of the cornea and, and, of course, the iris as well. So there is inflammation due to ischemia. Inflammation is acute, right? And it has all those features of a typical acute inflammation. How would you treat acute congestive glaucoma? Well, this is a very important thing about glaucomas. You have to get the patient in supine position, right? Supine position means when he's lying in bed and his nose and chest is it's pointing towards the ceiling, right? Here's the bed. That's him, right? His feet are pointing towards the upper side. His nose is pointing towards the upper side. He's looking up. Okay, so that's that's my definition of supine. Compare that to prone, in which he's the other way around. Prone position is very bad for glaucoma. Supine position is good for glaucoma because it makes sense. Think about it. If a guy is, if a guy is supine, what will happen is his lens will fall a bit downward, right? As a result, it will not press as harshly, as tightly against the iris, and there will be a good flow. When, when a patient lies like this, his, his lens kind of go down, okay? And then the iris here is open. As a result, water aqueous humor can flow out. Ah, nice diagram, by the way. Of course, you can use diuretics as well to suck out some of the, some of the uh, fluid which has increased the intraocular pressure. Analgesics to control the pain because it's, it's a PACG, of course, right? And anti-emetics because we studied in the last slide that they could cause... They could probably cause um, 
where is that slide? They could probably cause nausea and vomiting, right? Antiemetics. Antiemetic is a drug which which stops people from vomiting. Pilocarpine, right? It's it's it, it could facilitate because of course, remember, pilocarpine causes meiosis, right? It shuts the eyelid. It makes the eyelid much more thinner. And as a result, there's a chance of the fluid to pass outside. Beta blockers, remember, remember, it blocks beta-1 receptors. As a result, when the beta-1 receptor is blocked, there is no more aqueous humor, right? No more aqueous humor production, beta-1 blockers. For example, timolol. And of course, surgical interventions. There are there we can do two surgeries depending upon the condition of the patients. Uh, if the angle is a bit tighter than usual, you could do the filtration operation, right? Or simply put, it's that operation in which we would destroy that, uh, well, not technically destroy, but perforate the trabecular measure, okay? Which will lead to uh, improved flow of aqueous humor. And then there is another condition if, if, if the angle is like a little bit more open, right? It's not as close as the other one. You could do, you could of course do the traditional uh, iris puncturing, right? <laughs> I keep calling it iris puncturing. That is not its official name, of course. So that is it. We are done with acute. So that's it. We are done with acute congestive glaucoma. Just a quick, very quick recap. Medical emergency, if it is not treated quickly, it can cause blindness. There is increased intraocular pressure, which could cause infarction or necrosis and leading to acute inflammation. It is very, very serious. It is not to be taken lightly and it does not return back to its normal self, just like in the previous case of intermittent glaucoma, right? Symptoms, because, uh, because symptoms, it's painful, of course, we know, loss of vision, redness of eye, nausea and vomiting. There could be nerve damage and total or rapid loss of vision. As a doctor, you would observe that there is a raised intra intraocular pressure. You would do tests for visual acuity. And then there is, of course, ischemic inflammation of the anterior segment. You will observe this. There are many other signs, of course, uh, written in your book. There are like, I don't know, 50 signs right there. But I'm going to try and, and be more precise, right? Because if someone shows you 100 points, you will not remember any one of them. If someone shows you five points, there's a high chance that you'll at least learn four or five or three of them, right? That's 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 how I think. I don't know. Maybe that's not the case for you, but okay. We spoke about the treatments, uh, diuretics, analgesics, antiemetics, pilocarpy, beta blocker, surgical intervention, and supine position. Simple, nothing so difficult. Then we have uh, another, a bit of an interesting condition called a chronic angle closure glaucoma. So in this condition, we see that there is a permanent elevation of intraocular pressure because of something called synechy, right? Now, I have I've seen like 20 different pronunciation of, of this word on YouTube and many other places. I could not figure out which one was the correct. So I'm just going to call it synechy, right? So there is this increased intraocular pressure due to development of anterior synechy. What are synechy? Well, Let's get to the drawing board for a second. Let's say here is the eye of a normal individual. Here is the iris. Here is the cornea. Here is the other iris. Well, not the other iris, but the same iris which is cut. Here is the lens. Now, synechy is this strange condition in which this part, or maybe this part, or this part of the iris, it kind of bends and sticks with with. with probably this part or this part, right? As a result, you have this very strange thing where you see the iris, which kind of sticks over there, right? It's a very strange condition. And if you look at the uh, the eye of someone who has synechy, it's very strange. It, it's, it, it's a weird looking iris in that guy. Of course, you can imagine that. So synechy is this sticky thing, right? This sticky bond between the uh, iris and, and the other parts of the eye. Okay, and this iris, as you can see, it's it's bound over here, right? Anterior synechy, because of course it's towards the anterior side. There could be posterior synechy as well, which could force this to, to bind, I don't know, with the, probably the ciliary muscle or something. Okay, I just made that up, but there is a posterior synechy as well. So anterior synechy. And because of course you can you can you can you can guess if, if it's trapped here, there is a if it's permanently trapped here, there will be always increased IOP because there is Although it can flow freely from here, it cannot get into its drainage place. Okay? So, anterior synechy. Permanently elevated pressure due to development of anterior synechy, which keeps the angle closed permanently. Right? Intraocular pressure does not fluctuate, but it remains consistently high. Always high, because of course it's glaucoma. 
IOP does not fluctuate. In other cases, the IOP does fluctuate. When the angle opens up, when it closes a bit, when there is a bit of meiosis, mitriasis, it keeps on changing. And chronic, no such thing. How would you treat it? It's very similar to the other conditions, right? All those drugs which you study and all those surgical treatments that we, that we talk about. Nothing difficult, right? And there's this other condition called absolute glaucoma, right? It's absolute, right? It's full-blown. Remember the characteristic property of a glaucoma, decreased vision. It's an optic neuropathy, right? The first and foremost. And here we are. What would be a symptom? No perception of light. Absolutely no perception of light at all because there is a full-blown glaucoma and it has totally ruined this person's eyes, unfortunately, right? So, no perception of light and IUP is raised because of course it's glaucoma and there is something called severe cupping. Remember, we did we did discuss cupping in, 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 the, in the last presentation. We said that cupping is a characteristic property of a lot of glaucomas. What is cupping basically? Is that when there is a then see, let, let's imagine this is the eye, this is the retina, okay? And over here, as we know, the, uh, the optic nerve leaves. This place where, there's this, when the, where the optic nerve attaches itself to the retina, this is called the optic disc, right? And this, is the, this, this portion is the place which actually gets cupped, right? What happens is, okay, I, I removed the whole thing. Okay, let me, let me try it again. What happens in cupping is that you have this very prominent this very prominent dip kind of thing okay right at the optic disc cupping right so severe cupping at the optic disc one of the most important symptoms of, of glaucoma and it's painful sometimes but it could also be painless okay and the treatment of absolute glaucoma is medication although it doesn't really work because it's gone now and surgical procedures to maybe reduce a little bit of pain and reduce the IOP but if it's gone if there is no perception of light it's probably already too late to do anything about it right sad condition right it affects people it affects females more than males as we studied in the very first slide remember all of these five types that we are studied these are all a primary angle closure glaucomas right they're primary, right? They're not due to any secondary cause, and they're having angle closure. So, the five types which we just studied. Let's see the five types once again, just for just a little bit of a revision, right? Here are the five types. Okay, let's do it. Latent, there is no symptoms, right? There is literally no symptom, no problem at all. But there's a little bit of an angle closure, which can be observed through certain procedures. Then there is subacute, in which there is, of course, a little bit of an increased IOP in certain conditions and which goes away on its own, right? This is due to the physiological uh, meiosis and mitriasis, which occurs throughout the day, right? So it, occu it, it occurs it, and it goes away on its own as, as well. Then there is a little bit of a dangerous condition called the acute primary angle closure glaucoma, also called con acute congestive glaucoma, in which there is similar symptoms to the uh, subacute, but they don't go away, right? And, and it's painful. There could be necrosis of, of certain of certain tissues, right? Specifically the iris, and you need to have medications for these. And this needs to be treated very very quickly because it can totally kill the retina. Then there is the chronic glaucoma in which we saw the development of synechia and, and which, which, could, which would bind the iris into a, into a certain fixed spot, specifically anteriorly. And as a result, there is a chronic elevation of intraocular pressure. And it could, of course, lead to something called absolute glaucoma, which is very, very severe. And it's a total loss of vision. Okay? No perception of light at all. And there is probably no chance of recovery in that case. And I think that will be it for today. In the next lecture, we'll be talking about secondary glaucomas, right? The glaucomas which develop due to any other cause. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share if you learned something. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day.